Good morning, Christ Community Church. It is a glorious day in the Treasure Valley. It is not even crisp. It's just kind of warm out. Uh, so apparently we're going to get some weather uh, this weekend. So uh, cooler and lots of rain. So batten down the hatches. But friends, it is a good day. We're alive. The Lord's mercies are new every morning. And um, it's important we keep perspective on this, uh, these days of strife and of uh, polarization and of uh, claims of um, all manner of things. So um, yesterday in, you know, just like everyone else sort of wondering, geez, what's going to happen and reading things on the internet and trying to stay away as much as possible from Facebook, uh, but, you know, uh, measured, thoughtful reflections, at least as much as that can be 24 hours after the election. Um, and uh, in the midst of that, a song kind of came up. Somebody, I, I can't remember what, but it, it reminded me, a song came up, a hymn came up that just struck me as being totally appropriate for, for Christians um, for these days and this day. And it's a, it's a, it's an Advent hymn. It's a hymn that we sing sort of anticip in anticipation of Christ's coming. Uh, and again, as we celebrate his first coming, but looking forward to his next. And Advent hymns, well, Christmas hymns tend to be very, you know, joy to the world, the Lord is, you know, very wah, out there and, you know, joyful. And uh, we, we we just, you know, our whole being gets in them and we're just singing them and it's it's happy stuff. It's good stuff uh, and all. And uh, at the birth of our Savior, Advent hymns tend to be different. They tend to be um, often in the minor key. So the mood that it sends sets is more haunting, more, um, I dare I say, I don't, holy, you know, sort of creating a sacredness in time uh, with music and space and orally that we can hear uh, and all. And it, it sets a different tone, sort of a re more reflective, more, uh, we're dealing with um, ultimate things here and a person, God, who is all in all, as we've been reading in Revelation, as we've been preaching, uh, you know, St. John is in the throne room of heaven uh, last week and then this week, chapter five, and um, all of a sudden we're dealing with um, realities far larger than us and at which we don't have any say. We just observe if we're invited in. And we are invited in. Um, but this song, this song uh, struck me. In particular, the first stanza, I want to read it to you. It's Let All Mortal Flesh Keep Silence. Um, and uh, I just think it's a great song for us today to remember in these days as Christians. So here it is. Let all mortal flesh keep silence. And with fear and trembling stand, ponder nothing earthly minded, for with blessing in his hand, Christ our God to earth descendeth, our full homage to demand. Just think about that. Think about that. <clears throat> The second stanza says this, King of kings, yet born of Mary, as of old on earth he stood, Lord of lords in human vesture, in the body and the blood. He will give to all the faithful his own self for heavenly food. Um, yeah, the juxtaposition there of King of kings and Lord of lords and yet he's born of Mary, a 15-year-old Jewish peasant girl um, in, a, in a very humble uh, home uh, there in Bethlehem, uh, out of the way, 
the powers and that be didn't notice. Rome had no idea what was going on in the palaces. The governor didn't know anything. Um, shepherds were told of it. The lowest of society back then by angels. So you've got all these very humble things and you've got this glorious, royal stuff going on at the same time. Uh, captured in the person of Jesus. Rank on rank, the most heaven, excuse me, rank on rank, the host of heaven spreads its vanguard on the way as the light of light descendeth from the realms of endless day that the powers of hell may vanish as the darkness clears away. Folks, this is good news. Victory of the cross, that upside down victory, that inside out victory um, that Jesus won. At his feet, the six-winged seraph, cherubim, with sleepless eye, veil their faces to the presence, as with ceaseless voice they cry, Alleluia, 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 Lord Most High. And so we're left with simply worship at what God has done. He has descended, calls us to himself, our allegiance is to him, not to a political party. Um, as much as we're called to be involved in this world, to be salt and light, you bet, uh, and uh, to participate. Um, but our homage, our homage goes to Jesus. Our allegiance is to Jesus. Uh, no one else. He will brook no other rival. Um, he has come and he has planted his flag. And he has said, this world is mine. He has come and he's planted his flag in the universe. There's no square inch that he doesn't claim this is mine. And friends, there's no square inch of your hearts that he doesn't claim this is mine. I want you and all of you, is what he says. And when our eyes are on him, when we um, submit ourselves, when we... Um, our posture towards our own sin is one of repentance, is one of um, acknowledgement and throwing ourselves upon his mercies, um, looking at him, uh, we're changed, we're transformed. And in this time of incredible polarization, we can actually be salt and light. Um, we, we, um, we maintain what we are, our identity there. And we're able to bridge gaps and uh, love maybe our opponents, um, knowing that there are things far larger than politics and an election, um, and uh, um, that this life is hard and we all need help. And uh, we're there for that purpose and to show people where they, they can get help. So, friends. In light of all that's going on and on the uncertainties of the future, let us keep our eyes on Jesus. Uh, and um, it's kind of ironic as a pastor to be saying this, but keep our lips sealed. Let all mortal flesh keep silence and with fear and trembling stand. Ponder nothing earthly minded for with blessing in his hand. Christ our God to earth descendeth our full homage to demand. Let me pray for you. Father, <clears throat> for my friends out there, for my brothers and sisters, and for the, anyone who hears this, um, would pray that where there is fear, there would be a great revelation of your love. Point out Where there is uncertainty, Lord, where there, would there be a confidence in your love and in your work on the cross? that you have died for them, for us. Lord, where there is hopelessness, we pray for hope. Father, where there is despondency and despair, we pray for faith and love and hope, those three things that remain, and the greatest being love. And Lord, in the midst of this, we pray for joy. We pray for laughter. We pray for the ability to, to, to get outside of ourselves 
to cast our eyes upon you. And indeed you have won a great victory over sin, over death, and over our enemy, the evil one. And, O oh Lord, would, uh, would our minds be fixed on that and with fear and trembling see the blessings that you bring us. It's in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, friends. And I want you to have a great rest of the day. It's Thursday. Uh, have a great day tomorrow. Um, we will be in church on Sunday, but that church will be virtual. So it'll be me and my phone again. And we're in chapter five of Revelation. And um, I hope you're following along. This is an exciting, exciting journey um, that we have. And I think very, very relevant to our, our time. So I hope you join in. Um, and session will be meeting on Monday to decide whether or not it's wise to open up or not uh, for next week. And um, so stay tuned and uh, the Lord bless you. Amen and amen.